use this. I am going to be expedient as long as you follow with me. Go to Joshua. We're going to go to four places of Scripture. I'm actually going to have you turn to all of them and keep your finger in such. Um, <laughs> Joshua chapter 2, 1 Samuel chapter 19, and I'll repeat these, Acts chapter 9, and Matthew chapter 7. <laughs> and I was sitting there last night, and I can't help it. I'm not necessarily taking notes all the time, but when God even gives you a verse and you see something, you have to write it down. I don't know if anybody in here has a photographic memory, but praise the Lord for it. I do not. Um, and I was looking at this, and I noticed First Samuel is really popular this week or this week. Joshua chapter two. These stories are not unfamiliar. This is the story of famously the escape. Um, the men, Joshua going and, and they're visiting. And this is the story of Rahab. And in verse 1, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. I'm going to pause really, really quickly and just point something out. They went to the harlot's house because they knew they were going to be welcomed for the wrong reasons. I mean, she welcomed everybody, obviously. But God used that. Do you notice that? Look at verse 2. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in thither, in hither to night of the children of Israel to search of the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, so that he knew the same thing they did, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said, Thus there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went I wot not, pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up into the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way to Jordan under the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And jump down to verse 18. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread into the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's house household home unto thee. And it shall be that... Whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in thy house, his blood shall be upon our head, if any hand be upon him. We understand that the scarlet thread is what is going to save her in the destruction of Jericho. I'm going very fast, I understand that. But now we'll go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 19. And I noticed something, that there's a correlation in these, and I didn't notice this until last night. But this is the story where Saul understands he's being replaced in chapter 18. And he understands the, per the, the person who he's being replaced by is his own son-in-law. In, ver in, in chapter 18, in the latter part of the chapter, he gives Michael, his, his daughter, to David, like he promised. And he, it, it's interesting, we'll kind of just preview that. In verse 27, the last part, it says, And Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, to wife. Verse 28, And Saul saw and knew that the Lord was with David, and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him. Keep that in mind. Keep that in the back of your mind. 
verse 1 of chapter 19. And Saul spake to Jonathan his son and to all his servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted so much in David. And Jonathan told David, he, he warns him. And we know these stories. But jump down. It just, it, it amazes me in, in certain verses. Look at verse 11. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael, very cunningly, took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said he is sick. Now go with me to Acts chapter 9. I want us to just see something that's a common thread, pun intended. <laughs> Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, we revisit an old name. Thank God it was changed. Verse 22, but Saul increased the more in strength, he become, becomes Paul, and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying away was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he, ass he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Makes sense. He was killing him beforehand. These three stories, and there's many more like it, I find in the Bible. We're not going to go through all of them. But they have one common idea, and that's that God's man has a narrow escape. One thing I find in my own life and one thing that I have to prove to myself time and time again, that God gives us a narrow escape through temptation, through many different things, through the different situations that we find ourselves in. And we have to understand that we have to take action in that. If Paul didn't get in the basket, he wouldn't have been saved. If Rahab wanted to have thrown down the, the scarlet robe or thread, her family wouldn't have been saved. Right? If David wouldn't have escaped, let his wife, you know, put him through the window, she wouldn't have been saved, or he wouldn't have been saved. But last of all, go with me to Matthew chapter 7. And just simply, and when, you know, thinking about this, I have to remind myself, even though I was saved at an early age, my escape was narrow at, at the same way. In verse 14 it says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, and thank God I found it. Amen. And it was because someone took the Bible, my father and my pastor, and I think so much that God put me in this family, in this family of the church and my own family, because I was able to have a narrow escape. And if you're saved, you had to get by the same way. It's as simple as that. And honestly, we have to understand that we have to tell other people the same thing. You can't try to appease them. You can't, escape's not fun. You, you know, we read of stories of escape and we read of stories where people have tried to escape and failed, right? I mean, look back, World War II was horrendous for the Jews. You have the Holocaust and we can read the survivor stories. We don't necessarily want to be a survivor, right? We don't want to have to have that story to tell, but all of us do have that story if we're saved. God pulled us from that. God gave us an escape. And some of us don't, you know, maybe it's easier for some of the Jews to, you know, do what they were supposed to do during the Holocaust and listen to their government, right? You know, I don't know how many understood that when they had to wear those stars, what it actually meant before the Holocaust came down. You know, if, I don't know if it really registered in their head why they were being marked early on before any of the trouble started happening. 
But I guarantee during those hard, hard times of escape, they're thankful that they had an escape. And if we get back to understanding how important it was to us to have that escape, how much more important is it for us to tell other people of it? You know, Corey Ten Boone always comes to mind during that time. You know, and the different things that they had to do to hide people, right? You know what that did? That caused those Jews that were successfully getting out through the different avenues to tell other Jews about it. And we need to understand the same thing. It's going to take someone else to help you. Every single one of these stories, there was someone else that was helping along the way. And guess what? It's our job to do that. God's the one who saves, but if we're not going out there and doing what we're supposed to do, then we're not helping anybody else. Right? God, God doesn't have to use us. We understand that. We understand he's the creator of the universe, but he allows us to be a part of that. And guess what? Pretty sure Rahab's in that line. David's in that line, right? Thankfully, I'm in that line now because of that. I don't know about you, but that's a really, that's a blessing to me, and it encourages me to go out and tell other people. That's it.